Hello and welcome to Deliberately Creative. I'm Stephanie and today I am going to do this cute little acorn. And I'm going to use these Nicholson's Peerless Watercolors. I bought these a long time ago. This was the complete set of colors at the time and it was only $13. <laughs> Yeah, so this is real watercolor pigment on these papers, and uh, they're amazing, and I love them. If you get them, and you look at them, and you go, ooh, well, that's, that's kind of a hard thing to tell what that color looks like. If you flip it over, the back side of the card is actually what the color is. So this is deep blue. Yeah. I really like these. They still make these uh, and they do some different kinds of sets. So I'm going to use this to color with. But first off, I want to get a four by four square. This is a cotton Arteza watercolor card. And I want to thank my patron over on Patreon, Jan for sending me two boxes of them. I absolutely was floored when she asked me what I'd like to have and I told her nothing and she's like, I won't take that. Um, <laughs> so I had to tell her something and I had just used the last of my watercolor cards when I was on vacation. So it was good timing, right? So I'm going to do this little acorn and then we'll color it with those peerless watercolors. I'm using the Signo Uniball RT1 black pen. Uh, this is a 0.28. And I'm just going to look at this and kind of doodle sketch it in, straight in with the, with the pen. Now when I'm doodle sketching like this, I don't worry if my lines aren't perfect, if I don't get my perspective exactly right, it's okay. You know, you just, just take your time. You don't have to draw or, or doodle as fast as I do. I have some, some skill with this. I've been drawing and doodling for a long time. So if it's a new skill, just give yourself a break. Cut yourself some slack. And all those good things that people say. <laughs> and I mean it too. Just give yourself a break. And if you want to know what I'm doing here, what I'm doing is I'm looking, I chose a picture specifically because there's a uh, high contrast. So you can really see the contours. That's what I'm looking at. It's just something to give me a place to start from. I'll put a few of these little bark type lines on. You can do this all with pen and just leave it in pen. You don't have to, you don't have to put color on it or watercolor. You could use gouache, you could use acrylic, you could use watercolor, you could use colored pencils crayons. It's like making your own coloring page. And that's what I really like about it. It's like making my own coloring page. And I'm thinking that it would be kind of fun to do a coloring book of simple nat nature items in a four by four square on a five by seven, eight by five by eight, five and a half by eight and a half, whatever size uh, Amazon lets me do and uh, do a coloring book of nature but small nature that people could then take and you know make into their own things now this is going to come down and around I'm I'm making this one a little bit bigger than it is and the whole the whole shell might not even make it on or if it does, it will be um, smaller. Now look at that. I didn't go over far enough to match up. It's okay. I just I just drew a little bit more. 
cool thing here, if you look, there's texture. Those lines just will become part of the texture. I am going to shorten this nut up just a little bit. Like that. Make it fit inside that cap. So let me know in the comments if you would if you would buy a simple nature creative nature coloring book something with items like this would you buy one would it be something that you would share with other people I'm trying to get some coloring books figured out that might be good as gifts I want to make that little nubbin just a little bit bigger. There we go. There's these lovely kind of stripes in here. If you're going to just do it in pen, you can put more striping in if you want. I am going to do this and because I'm going to put color on but I do want some of those textures and stuff to be showing up already. So there we go. Now I'm doing this for my Inktober today also, uh, even though it doesn't coincide with any of the prompts that I've seen anywhere, that's okay. I am going rogue on this one. I liked the look of this. And I wanted to get this as a video for you guys. So this is um, actually for day 11. Yeah, it's day 11. So this is for day 11. I didn't, haven't posted it on Instagram or anything yet because, well, I haven't finished it. Um, <laughs> but it will be going up on day 13, I think. And I'm just doing these, they're, they're sort of a, a scale, little, little leafy, little triangles basically, or Vs. Now this is where you see me incorporate those random little lines Look at that, we just fixed it. We just fixed it and made it so you didn't even know that I had made a mistake. And if you hadn't been watching the video, you would never know that there was even a thought that there was an oops. There we go. I just want that texture in there. A little bit more texture right up here. There's some little bits of texture here. I'm gonna take a photo of it and then we'll start coloring. So I took a picture. I will let my patrons have it as a free reference. If you are interested in helping to support my channel and my art studio, check out the Patreon love to have you there now what I'm going to do is go ahead and I want to just wet this background I did not tape this down and if you notice the pen does not move it doesn't go anywhere it's one of those things that I really enjoy about this uh, this pen is that it is permanent or waterproof maybe not permanent but it is waterproof And I'm just going to get that background. I'm going to do a soft gray, soft blue gray. If I need to mix a color, I'm just going to use this metal tin. And so now what I want is to figure out my gray. And I think that there was a pearl gray right back here. So I want to make a little puddle of this pearl gray. It's a very blue gray. I'm 
Look at that. Now, a friend of mine, Sandra, she did a big review of these paints over on the Doodle Wash website. It's their, their focused uh, newest blog article. And she took a piece of one of these and put it in a glass of water, completely dissolved the paint off of it to see how many pages she could paint. You'll have to, you'll have to check that out. It's very interesting. All right, so I like that. I wanna soften that up just a little bit. A little bit more water. There we go. It's very transparent. Look at that. Boom. We have a background. I'm going to dry this really quick and then we are going to move on to the to the stick and the nut and the cap. So there we go. Look at that. I could leave that just as it is, but I'm not going to. <laughs> I am going to just wipe off that little bit of paint. So brilliant yellow, orange yellow, deep yellow, pink, scarlet, crimson, mahogany brown. So I want to put a little puddle of mahogany brown out. See, I'm just touching my wet brush right there. That's all I'm doing. I've got a nice little puddle of very, very lovely mahogany brown. That's, that's perfect. And while that's sitting there like that, I'm going to, I'm going to go ahead and grab a little sepia brown, I think. Sepia, sepia. Oh yeah, that's good. I like that. Okay. I think that's what I need. And then maybe a little bit of one of these, maybe that orange yellow. all I'm doing. Oh yeah. There we go. And then I'm turning my, my little cards so that way they can dry. They're separated by the other pages. They're not touching each other. And so I'm going to take some of that sepia and some of the, some of that orange. I'm going to put that in up here. that. I'm going to put some of that right on here also on this part of the stick. I'm just coloring in now. You can do this. It's just like coloring in a coloring book. I'm going to take some of that sepia and the mahogany brown. See how that's a different color. That's over here, I'm leaving some light. And yeah, I went outside my line, so what I'll do, I'll just take everything outside the line. Then I can go back in and put a tiny little bit of a line outside of that. <laughs> okay. And then I think I'm gonna take just some of that sepia brown because it's a different enough color. Oops, that was some of the mahogany. All right, let's, let's go back over here and grab, that's the mahogany, I want the sepia. Straight from, oh, 
That's really rich, really dark. Look at that. And that was just straight from the card without adding a lot of water to it. And I'm just looking, where's the shadows? This is my darkest color. I'm not going to use black. So this is my darkest. And I'm just... I love doing ink and wash paintings. They make me so happy. They go together so quickly. Because you've got the structure. You've got the framework underneath. See, I want to take some of that and I'm going to drop it onto some of the wet paint that's there. And then into some of the dry spots. Gives us a little bit of texture. I'm trying to keep this kind of loose. Kind of loose, you know, not totally. And I will dry it and then come back in. That bit there is dark. I'm going to let some of this bleed in. I love that. This is so cool. I've not played with these in such a long time. Sandra's little article absolutely inspired me to go dig these out all right I need to dry it so I can go in and do some more details sepia brown again oh and this brush is a number 10 round it was um, Zen art a year or two ago I'm gonna put some of this darker shadow Kind of going up along like that. And then there's and I will warm this up with more of that mahogany brown. But I want to get my dark in. And I'm just going to put some indications of like shadow underneath of some of those little scales on the cap and then a bit more dark concentrated right underneath this edge look at that oh so cool I might, well, no, there, now that's getting dark enough. Oh yeah, that's, that's dark enough there now. And this little bit down here gets really dark and there's a bit more of that in the striping. following the picture. See, there's those little stripes. That's what I'm doing. I like using references. References for real things. And even references for imaginary things. Because if you're trying to do something, you know, trying to make a flying teapot or whatever. Well, teapots are real. You can look at a teapot that's along the style of what you're trying to use or trying to represent. So, you know, just have fun. Now I'm taking the mahogany brown. Ooh, see that's actually really dark when it's saturated with straight from the, straight from the pa uh, page. But you can go like this and you can just add a little more water to it. 
and it softens it up disperses the pigment these are very pigmented and that was some more of the mahogany brown that was less less uh, pure it had more water added to it so okay there's that got that color we've got that color I still need more of that dark 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 there we go I just needed a little bit more of this shadow to that one side needing a little bit of oh yeah there we go just leaving a little bit of of the paper showing as my highest highlight I'm trying I I'm I am trying I am learning I am growing my skills I am exploring and experimenting and sharing my tips and tricks with you if you like my style I do have several coloring books available on Amazon I have a, a nature um, character you know nature animals type coloring book I have doodle gems I've got cats I've got houses from around the world I have uh, a whole coloring book of comfort tea and coffee and treats baked goods all the all the yummies and lots of the pictures in my coloring books have videos the first two coloring books for certain were bit were built completely on uh, video I did a a marathon for for my holiday ornaments and a marathon for my um, cozy comfort so if you're interested those videos are listed up above in the iCard, the playlists. After I drew them all in my marathons, I painted them all live. Yeah. Okay, so just a wash of very pale orange. Just to put a little bit of color on there. And then I'm going to go like this and oh yeah there we go there we go there we go see I think that is just about look at that see that's how I'm getting you can lift these colors this is cotton paper. These colors lift off of the cotton paper. Love it. Love it. Okay, that needs a little bit darker right on the underside of that edge. I'm going to make sure I've got my sepia brown. Taking it straight from the, the pad. And yep, I do notice that I had a strange little drip of water. I'm going to just sort of slurp that back. There we go. Oh yeah. See, there's that shadow. There's that shadow. There's a bit of that darker shadow here and a little bit darker underneath. And we have a fun, nature-inspired doodle coloring page. You can do it yourself, or if you're one of my patrons, you can download it for free from our patron site. And I'm going to sign it just right here. 
with the paint that I was using already. There we go. We used four colors. We used the pearl gray, the sepia, the mahogany brown, and orange yellow. Peerless watercolors. So much fun. I'll be playing with these some more. Take care, guys. Remember to go out and do something creative. Take care of yourself so you can take care of those around you. I want to see you back here again really soon. And uh, let me know. Do you want to see a small form factor nature coloring book? Leave a comment. Leave me some suggestions. And I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.